Let's summarize what we know about radians so far. Degrees are used to measure the opening of the angle, and the information they contain is consistent for all circles of all sizes. Length is used to measure the circumference of the circle, and the information length gives you is specific to the size of the circle you used. Length does not translate to bigger or smaller circles. Radians multitask and can cover both the opening of the angle and the length of the circumference. They are also consistent across all sizes of circles. If you want to figure out why you have to learn radians, we must take a closer look. Where do degrees come from? Degrees are in agreement. We take a circle and we begin slicing it up. We can slice as much as we like and stop at any number of slices. The number the human race decided to stop at was 360. Face along the edge of one slice and rotate to face the edge of another slice. Then count the slices in between. This is the number of degrees. What is so special about 360? Why not split it into 100 slices? Well, let's put out two columns of both numbers and let's break them into lots of easy, tidy fractions. Look at how many nice, neat, tidy answers we get on the 360 side. We get some on the 100 side, but not as many. Look at how many answers are awkward numbers to remember that go on to infinity. 360 has a nice bit of convenience to it. Most people can visualize a third of a pizza and would prefer to call it a nice round number like 120 instead of 33.33333333333. I'm going to put to this get the on outside, the table. You take a straight Four length degrees, and slide it along the, unit the curve line to measure it. Read. That's it. The length can be yards and feet if you're in the stone age. Or meters if you want to be in fashion. Or a plank length if you find yourself stuck on a photon. All of these and any other lengths are just agreed upon. And they each have their own backstory that you may find on the internet. So let's put this on our table. Length, the unit, is agreed. In radians we take a radius of a circle and use it to measure along the circumference. This is measuring the circumference of the circle using the radius of the circle. This is measuring a part of the circle using another part of the circle. Both parts that we are looking at come from that very circle. It's not a measurement that is chosen to make things pretty. It's not a measurement that is taken off somebody's foot. It is a measurement of the circle by the circle. For this reason we can kind of call it a natural unit. Because we like the natural sense, we have prepared a large amount of our formulae in maths and in other sciences to use radians over degrees. But if you have an angle and for some reason you need to get the sine of it, well here is the formula for sine and if the question gives you 4.2 radians, you can put 4.2 into where the X is and get to work. If the question gives you 30 degrees, you must convert it to radians. Then you can put it into where the X is, then you can go to work. If the question gives you 6.28 radians, you can put it straight into the formula and have at it. If the question gives you 1 degree, you convert it to radians first, then you put it into the formula and off you go. If you do you not go. like this formula and you prefer to use the screw that I have a calculator technique, you still have to tell your calculator whether the question has given you radians or degrees. If the question gives you 4.2 radians, you can set calculator to radians, then punch and sign 4.2. If the question gives you 30 degrees, set calculator to degrees, then punch and sign 30. If the question gives you 6.28 radians, you can set calculator to radians then type and sign 6.28. If the question gives you one degree, set calculator to degrees, then you can find sign one. To help you get used to how we use radians, please continue on to the next level.